Bellator MMA is a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. for most win in the Bellator cage. He is the current featherweight world champion. He, got it. he also holds the lightweight title. Oh my God! The only thing missing, one million dollars. Tonight, Patricio Pitbull looks to move closer to that prolific payday when he battles the opponent handpicked by the champ himself. You are a loser, Pedro Cavallo. I'm the guy that has been chosen, and in the end, I'm going to become world champion. It's Pitbull versus Cavalli in the main event. If you want to be king, you're going to have to kill me. Plus, Daniel Vaisho and Emmanuel Sanchez collide in a rematch as we resume the quarterfinals of the Featherweight World Grand Prix. This is Bellator 252 on CBS Sports Network. September 7, 2019, 16 fighters embarked upon the most treacherous and character-testing journey of their fighting lives. Little did we know that in addition to colossal confrontations, we would have a temporary closure. But tonight, we welcome you back inside the Mohegan Sun Arena. We reignite the Featherweight World Grand Prix. First, a rematch between Daniel Baisho and Emmanuel Sanchez. Then, in our main event of the evening, Patricio Pitbull fights Pedro Cavalho. One semifinal will be contested one week from tonight. After our fights this evening, the second set of semifinalists will be set in stone, and we could have ourselves a new champion. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg. My partners, of course, Josh Thompson, Big John McCarthy, Patricio Pitbull, undoubtedly the most dominant fighter inside the Bellator cage. He keeps setting him up. He keeps knocking him down. Knock him down is exactly what he does because he has fought the very best. You look at the lineup of fighters that Patricio Pitbull has gone through. Guys like Emmanuel Sanchez getting into Juan Archuleta, who's the Bantamweight champion now, and taking out the lightweight champion in Michael Chandler. Patricio Pitbull is the best fighter that has ever fought in Bellator MMA. You know, Josh, we've talked about it before. So many fighters are defeated before they even enter the cage because mentally they know they're going to face a Pitbull. I don't believe that's going to be the case tonight with Pedro Cavalgu. Well, the one thing that Pedro doesn't lack is what, John? Confidence. Confidence. <laughs> and I got to tell you, he understands. When he got selected for this fight, he was almost emotional. He just didn't want to show it on air. The one thing that we talk about with him is that his confidence is there. But he's got all the intangibles to put the pressure and, and put pressure on Pitbull to lose his title tonight. Will he be able to get it done? Because when you reach and you put that amount of pressure, you sometimes leave yourself out of position. And Pitbull now is so composed and so relaxed, and he finds his openings, and man, is he good. Pedro is 6-0 and oh since making the move to SBG Ireland. But we get started with our first quarterfinal matchup. At 145 pounds, he has lost to only one man inside the Bellator cage. He is a pit bull. Emmanuel Sanchez, and I quote, Daniel Vaisho will be one and done at the Mohegan Sun. Bellator MMA on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Mohegan Sun Arena. We don't sell tickets, we make memories. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by proper number 12, Irish Whiskey, the smoothest liquid gold in the world.
locked, loaded, and ready to launch Daniel Feichel. I already beat Sanchez and have no problem to beat him again. We'll face Emmanuel Sanchez. He knows he didn't beat me. Mission is very simple. It's time, and it's all over. Eliminate Sanchez, move on to the next one. I am stunned. I do not believe it. And get that one million dollar. Daniel Vaisho won the first fight by split decision. He is one win away from another shot at Bellator Gold. Emmanuel Sanchez says that is not going to happen. And now. Set to make his way to the cage of Manuel and Matador Sanchez. I don't just want one title at the end. I want to be the honest man. Oh, 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 Emmanuel Sanchez told us everything is really clicking for me now. It just comes from all of my training, all of my experience, tougher opposition, and now a chance at redemption. In fact, the possibility of two doses, but the only thing Sanchez is thinking about right now is his rematch with Daniel Vaisho. Josh, your keys to victory for El Matador. Well, what Emmanuel Sanchez needs to do is he needs to make this an uncomfortable fight for Daniel Vaisho. He needs to keep him on his heel, press him, make him fight at angles. If he doesn't, if he's able to get him to move straight back, he'll land great combinations. Also, use his bag of tricks. Just the straight double leg, single leg takedowns is not going to work against Emmanuel, against Daniel Vaisho like it worked in work with Saul Rogers. Emmanuel Sanchez has this in the bag as long as he follows these tricks. And now making his way to the cage, Daniel Drake Faisal. Started from the bottom, now we here. Fifty-first professional bottom, fight for Daniel Faisal. Even in victory, he said watching the first fight back, he kept thinking, "Why am I hesitating? I need to throw." And that is what he will look to do as he looks to defeat Sanchez once again. Big John, your keys to victory for Vaisho. Well, simple for Daniel Vaisho, you have to control the distance and the pressure that Emmanuel Sanchez, you do that with your footwork. Use the clinch at times, but when you get in the clinch, you must dirty box. You must hit him with shots that makes him respect closing that gap. Our tail of the tape for this first quarter final matchup of our featherweight world grand prix 35 year old vice set to fight 30 year old sanchez again experience on the side of vice everything else is virtually identical let's get it to the voice michael c williams ladies and gentlemen good evening and welcome to bellator mma live on cbs sports network from Mohegan Sun Arena tonight, we resume the Featherweight World Grand Prix. Fight number three in the quarterfinals is set now for five five minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at five foot nine, weighing in 145 pounds even, the former world title challenger enters with 19 professional victories, four losses. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Emmanuel El Matador Sanchez. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5 foot 10, weighing in 143.8 pounds, a two time world title challenger. The veteran brings 40 professional victories, 11 defeats. From Frankfurt, Germany, introducing Daniel Dre. And the referee in charge, Todd Anderson. Gentlemen, we have the rules in the back. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. If you wish to touch gloves, do so now. 
Step back and get ready. That was not a touch of gloves. That was a pounding, and we are set to go. The winner advances to the semifinals. Will it be Faiso or will it be Sanchez? Ready? Ready? Hey! Here we go! Tonight's fight clock presented by Geico. Daniel Faiso in the red gloves, Emmanuel Sanchez in the blue gloves. Emmanuel right off with the great jab, a nice little overhand right hook distance, come out with the flying knee. Baisho says, let's stand and trade. Even though he didn't keep the takedown, at least Baisho is he's putting it in Emmanuel Sanchez's mind. Hey, I will take you down at any moment in this fight. The days, though, of fighters wanting to take down Duke Rufus's fighters and holding them down, those days are gone, though, with Rafael Lovato Jr. there as well, and then their old coach putting in all the work. These guys have gotten so good off of their back as well as from the top position. Sanchez says he still has a great relationship with his longtime jiu-jitsu coach, Daniel Vanderlee, but Rafael Lovato Jr., Rafael Lovato Jr., is such a class act, and our former champion who had to retire due to health issues but what an addition to Rufus Sport in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I show 22 career wins. Nice submission. Head kick. Very nice return by Emmanuel Sanchez. I can tell you right now, this is round four because these guys have started off very fast. They have not started off like they did in the first fight. Duke Rufus, Coach Kush, Tom Cushman, in the corner of Emmanuel Sanchez. First fight, four years, three months, 22 days ago, went the distance, split decision win for Daniel Fleischer. Position. Very good nice kick. Position. 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 Position.
were three round fights. Now we have five rounders the rest of the way. There is a lot of pressure that Emmanuel Sanchez is putting on Vaisal right now. He's the guy deciding, I want this thing to be at this speed. He told us earlier this week his conditioning is at the highest level ever. Man, he's throwing a lot of head kicks. What a great start to the rematch. Break easy. There we go. Good round, boys. Stay disciplined with your leg. He's right inside the right hand. That's it. Focus on the location. Okay? You're good, Daniel. You're good, man. Tonight at 9.30 Eastern, the PBR World Finals get underway from Jerry World. It's the best riders in the business all looking to come home with the hardware only right here on CBS Sports Network. Round two. Red gloves for Daniel Weichel, blue gloves for Emmanuel Sanchez. Well, Emmanuel Sanchez might not have been exactly correct saying one is done at the Mohegan Sun. But I'll tell you what, the pressure that he's putting on Vaisal and how much output he's had is incredible, Josh. Yeah, he's had the output, but he's also landed at a less percentage, though. So in these later rounds, you're hoping to see him still put out the output, but have a little bit more success with finding the chin and the body and the, and the legs. Just had success with that right hand there. He's got Vaisal in the point where Vaisal's starting to square himself up. That's not a good thing. Nice body shot. Hit him with the right hand. His body's hurt. Gone. He's absolutely hurt. He got hit to the body and the head. He's feeling it right now. You can see Sanchez is trying to close in. He's got Vaisal in trouble. Duke Rufus, oh, he's vocal in the corner. Look for Sanchez to go right back to the body here after one of these exchanges right there again. Good shot to the liver. I like how Sanchez is pushing on the face and letting the hands go. Vaisal's again. Sanchez looking for the finish. It's going to be over, Mike, if he just lands a big shot here because Vaisal folded on that hook to the liver. Emmanuel Sanchez looking to advance. Projecting right 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 Sanchez trying to go back to the body, Josh. Even on the ground. Move. That's it. He needs to make a little bit more space and stop smothering his punches. Pick and choose his shots. You hear his corner tell him, slow it down and hit harder. Todd Anderson right on top of the action. It's a big elbow right there. It's sometimes that you want your fighter to actually separate, make that fighter get back up because you were doing so well in the stand-up and you hurt him there. John, but once you've been hurt to the body, especially this early in a five-round fight, you'll continue to get hurt to the body throughout the fight. Sanchez resets. And you hear his corner echoing what you guys talked about. Go right back to the body, which he does. He's got to make sure he doesn't get careless, though. He's going back to the body again. That body, once, once and again. That was a nice shot by Vaisal. But Sanchez eating it like it's nothing. 
A lot of time on the clock here, round number two. What you're seeing though, John, is that Daniel Weiss was having to fight out of character. He's usually the technician, makes other fighters fight his style of fight, and that's not happening right here. Which means a lot more energy is being expended by Weiss because of this situation. I show the gamer we knew that coming in. 52nd pro fight, 40 professional wins. Output of Emmanuel Sanchez is remarkable. Look at this. Look at the numbers in round two. And they keep adding up. That's the strikes landed, Mike. Not the ones just thrown because Sanchez is just throwing an incredible amount right now. He's just letting things fly. He talked about this all week, John. He's going to make him fight a dirty, grimy fight. He's going to get into his face. He cannot fight. He didn't think Dale Vice could fight going backwards. Oh, beautiful head kick off the transition. Well, if there's one thing that we've seen out of Emmanuel Sanchez, he has now weaponized his conditioning. He says, there's no one that can go with me, and I'm going to prove that by pushing the pace in every fight that I'm in. Clipped him on the chin again. Well, John, for years, he said I was just eating whatever I wanted, and now he's on. He's got a diet, and he's got a nutritionist, and he's got him on track. And he said he's, he's felt the best he's ever felt. Nice leg kick there. Right there. Friend Stacy, a physical therapist. Emmanuel said, I'm much more of an athlete now. Right now, Emmanuel Sanchez is making a good fighter look bad. He is just eating Daniel Weichel alive. This type of pace of fight is going to be hard. It's going to be hard for him to recover between rounds, John and Daniel Weichel. Fact of the matter, he's still standing. Pretty darn impressive. Good? Good round, Joe. I have a target in here, come on. Uh, don't yeah. This one, do it. Yeah. yeah. And Tiger, 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 Tiger. Yeah. Make his body suffer. Okay. Hang in there. Then you go back to the jab. Go back to the jab and move. Okay, still. Okay? Go back to the jab. Here is just a sample of what Emmanuel Sanchez like. Look Coming at that down. body shot. That was solid right there. Time. And then that one drops there, Daniel Vichel down. And that is, he cannot respond. His body is giving out on him. But he's stuck tough. He's good. good. Right Very good. now, the Thank doctor's you, in looking at We're him. I think he's going to let him go. But Daniel Vichel, right now, you can see the effect of what has happened so far in the first two rounds of this you ready? fight. Hey, round three. A big round two for Emmanuel Sanchez. Take that leg all day, man. all day. Take a look at the scorecard. 10-8 on Big John's scorecard in round two. Focus, focus, focus. Was he nearing a 10-7? No, 10-7 is overwhelming as far as Daniel Weiss is not really even fighting that. He's just surviving in the fight. So you can't go there with that, but it's definitely a 10-8 now. Scott Coker reminding us all the winners of the Featherweight World Grand Prix will take home $1 million. The winner of this fight will have a title fight for Tony. Nice punch landed by Weichel. Daniel Weichel is showing so much heart, grit, durability in this fight. It's incredible. He has come here to win. Sanchez is going to start to go back to the body probably about the two and a half minute mark. 
Get Daniel Vaisho not to think yeah. about it. There you go through the little knee, knee to the body there as well. Duke Rufus, when we were break, said to his fighter, throw that right elbow, and they come with that left to the box. Jocko's leg kicks are starting to have a little bit of an effect. You see Dan not moving as well. He's kind of dragging his foot now when he takes a step back. There, he just lifted it up a little bit higher to make sure that it moves. Uh, he, had, he had checked the kick earlier, and I thought that that was going to stop what Sanchez was doing with it. Sanchez doesn't care. Sanchez is a, he's a savage. He's a maniac here. He doesn't care about anything that Daniel Weiss is doing. Because Daniel's fighting, and he's fighting hard. He just can't stop what Daniel's doing. Well, those of you guys that didn't get to see between the breaks is that Emmanuel Sanchez was kept looking over at Daniel Weissel's corner, but he never sat down. He's put his foot up on the stool and stood up and just was looking at Daniel Weissel's corner the whole time. A little bit of game sh gamemanship in there. He's circling into your kick. And right at Q, he threw the head kick. You can see what, what Sanchez is doing. He's forcing him to move towards his power, Josh. Watch just the way he's cutting it all off, John. Yeah, watch him step off and force Faisal into his power. When he picks his leg up for the burst, look at the the thing with Emmanuel, though, is he lets sometimes that, that Mexican in him come out, and he just, he'll go ahead and take a shot or two to give one. In a five-round fight, though, they start to add up, and I know he's winning on the strikes right now, but he's got to make sure he doesn't take too many shots, because Dale Weissel is not ever to be counted out. Second five-round fight of Emmanuel Sanchez's career. Catch him, catch him, catch him, catch him, no. Coach Kush, Duke Rufus. Watch your head. Good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Very good. Man and a half, man. Position that. Step on this. Get him off there. Right off that. Shoulder, shoulder. He's looking for the right hand. He's looking for the right hand. Go. Double check. Okay, that's good. Walk the low. Come on. One minute, two. One twenty, Danny. One twenty. Yeah. The other five-rounder for Sanchez was against our champion, Patricio Pittman. That was a great fight. Percentage much more even than it was. Yeah, you can look at the percentage. Look at the landed. It's more than double. Yep. 50 seconds, Manny. Tremendous oh, output by Sanchez. Amazing heart from Weichel. Young fighters at home, if you guys are, if you guys are listening to this and watching this, the opportunity of, with the quarantine or with the COVID situation, you can hear these, these top-level coaches coaching their fighters and the fighters not looking at them, just reacting by shaking their head. Yes, coach, I heard you. And that's that's something you develop over time in the gym. Emmanuel said just did that with Duke Rufus. He's beautiful. No setup needed at all. Uh, normally we talk about, ah, you don't want to do, you don't want to do that raw dog. Doesn't matter right now. Great. Nice. Thank you. I feel you. I'm low kick. I don't chill. Yeah. I feel it. All day. All day. Yeah. It's entertaining for sure. Here. Okay. Yeah. Just a beat. Yeah. If he balks, watch this. When he balks, now you attack with him. Because he stalled. Boom. He steps. Yeah. Yeah. While he's up there, river's wide open. Okay? Yeah, you're doing good though. And also, let's keep that range hard get. Hard get, some up. Hard get, hard get, some up. Yeah, yeah, you're doing good. I need to go on and a take down and ride. Oh, yeah, right. All right. We got two more rounds. We, let's beat him up on the ground too. Second zone. You're doing great, kid. You're Second zone. Back up. This is what was occurring. Look at the leg kicks that 
Manuel Sanchez is landing here. Those are hard, heavy leg kicks over and over on Vaishal's leg. But then he switches it up, and that is due to Vaishal being hurt to the body multiple times. He's got to keep that elbow in tight. He just goes right over the top of the glove. Well, between rounds, Duke Rufus is told, look, let's go lower on the kick. Stay low on the kick. And this is now Dalian Vaishal trying to fall, figure out the riddle that's going on right now. Championship rounds. Sixth time Vaishal in his career has been scheduled for five rounds. He has gone the distance once. Lost a split decision to Patricio Pitbull. That, in fact, was the only time he went to the championship rounds. So both men have been in a round four once. This, the second time. Well, between rounds, Emmanuel Sanchez was talking to Duke Rufus. He was letting him know, I see that. I understand. This is, I know it's going to be there. I see it. You're, I hear you all day. You know, like, those are things that I have talked about with Lucas Brennan earlier. But when you're talking back to your corners and letting them know that I understand and I hear you and I'll be doing them, and just so you know. Beautiful job on the head kick again. Again, and that, that head kick is set up by what you just saw him have. He's hitting the body still, and Faisal is very cognizant of the fact that I need to protect my body. That's, look at that elbow tucked down tight. Move, move, move. said when Weichel's hands are up, that's when the liver is available for damage to be done, or further damage, if you will. Okay, shoulders up. Move, move, move. Nice job. Good 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 job. John, like I said last round, do not count Daniel Weissel out. He's not someone to be counted out. He's a technician. He may not be the most uh, fast and explosive fighter, but he will find ways to land his shots. It's only going to take one or two right on the button to finish uh, Emmanuel Sanchez. You do not earn 40 professional wins without some skill, will, desire, and dedication. I don't even want to fight. <laughs> let alone. Jeez, man. That's impressive. That's the midway point of round four. The winner advances to fight the winner of our main event. Daniel Vaishal must have a cut on his, over his eye, because I see a lot of blood on the back of the Mayo Sanchez's back. You can see it from that angle. The corner of Vaishal's right eye. See a little bit of that game and shit again, shown by Mayo Sanchez. A little grittiness. A little grittiness through that. He's throwing his chin right in that eye socket. Manuel Sanchez is set for Boya De La Hoya and the Mexican Oscar De La Hoya of MMA. Off the four on that time. All right, back to the body. That landed just a tiny bit. He saw Daniel Weissel drop the elbow down and circle away from it. Sanchez right now is just filling himself. He's having a good time. He's out there just picking and choosing his shots. Daniel Weishel has no answer for anything he's doing right now, John. The cut may have been caused by a clash of heads. We see that quite often. The damage, most of it being delivered by El Matador. 40 seconds, 40 seconds, 40 seconds. Clearly ahead on the scorecard. Under 30. 20 seconds, Daniel. 20 seconds. 
pressure that Emmanuel Sanchez brings in the fight is impressive to watch, Josh. You know what it's like to deal with somebody that can do that. It's, it's not even so much the pressure you're having to deal with. It's realizing that even if I hit this guy with a truck, he's still going to be there. What do? What do? What do? What you doing? Here's your water, son. Wenn du den Rücken hast, dann schickst du ihn nach vorne mit Gewalt, mit allem, was du hast. Dann greifst du den Hals an, sofort, okay? Wir brauchen den Kick. Okay. Wie das machen? Alles, was du hast, spielt keine Rolle. Die Energie ist da, die Atmung ist rein. Komm nach vorne, ich kann nicht mehr. Ich kann nicht mehr. minutes of combat and once again Sanchez did not sit he put one foot on the stool fifth and final round big John's scorecard says one thing and one thing only Daniel Vaisho needs to stop Emmanuel Sanchez in the next four minutes and 35 seconds uh, I mean, I'm super impressed with everything that I've seen Michael do as far as trying to stay in the fight. But right now, you have to look at Sanchez has pitched a shutout. He was angry at first, thought he had won that first fight, but then stood back, reassessed, and said, I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow from it. And he has done so exponentially. This is by far the best performance we have seen from El Matador. Step back, elbow, step back. As you guys said earlier, he was making a very good fighter, a great fighter look. Not so great early on. And now Sanchez remains composed in this fifth and final round. But what he's doing in this round, though, is he's never getting Daniel Weissel a chance to sit down on his punches and throw power. He knows that Daniel Weissel needs to get the knockout or the submission to win this fight. So he's like, let me just keep pressing you and making you cut angles so you never have an opportunity to set down on a hard shot and potentially get that finish that you may need. Sanchez, in his career, never stopped, as I mentioned earlier. And you also have to look at you know, everything that's happened in this fight now to this point, Mike. All the steam is just out of Vaishal's punches. His strikes just don't have that. The Sanchez was eating them in the first round easily. Now there's not even a question. He's playing with fire here. Anytime you're in that standing position and you're standing over someone's guard, that up kick is there. Daniel Weichel said, and I quote, I can't let him fight at his pace. I think this is the most important thing I have to make sure of if I want to win this fight. If you're Daniel Weichel, unfortunately, he has not been able to do so. Well, they had a close round in the first round, John. It was close back and forth. They gave it to Emmanuel Sanchez, but it was close. And he was following his game plan the best he could, Daniel Weichel was. But once that body shot happened in the second, it just changed the dynamic of the whole fight because he was always concerned about getting hit or kicked in that same spot throughout the fight. The body shots have been a game changer. Both men have gone 25 minutes. Once. Both defeated by the same fighter. Our champion at 145 and 155, Patricio Pitbull, who will fight Pedro 
Kabal, you in our main event. Hold down, cross your legs. Can't bump one. Heinz gets it. Light heavy, yeah. Now hit, hit. Don't big, but You see Vaisho trying to utilize a butterfly guard here. The whole reason he's in that butterfly guard, Josh, is this can get him that reversal position where maybe he can work in towards the submission. Yes, good. Constant pressure. Most guys have a really good with him. They got one good sweep that they like to use all the time. And you can tell his hook sweep is the one that he likes to go to. Sanchez just over a minute away from the semifinals. Corner Vaishal saying and urging him to step forward. Easy for them to say at this point from where they're at, but he's trying. He's giving it everything that he has. He is just in against a guy right now that at this time is just a step ahead. And you find that most people that fight Emmanuel Sanchez, nice right hand by Emmanuel Sanchez, you'll find that most people that fight him in the fourth and fifth round are most people that go the discipline. This is what happens. This is the story of when you fight Emmanuel Sanchez. They get tired of his pace and his relentlessness coming through. He's happy. He ain't got me. He's got his self point. Sanchez on multiple occasions worked with Anthony Pettis, helping him prepare for five round battles against guys like Henderson, Melendez, and Dos Anjos. Ten seconds remain. What a performance by El Matador. And what a heart shown by Daniel Weichel. And take a look at what Daniel Sanchez did here. That shot to the body just takes the legs out from Vaishal. Emmanuel Sanchez just incredible. I said Daniel Sanchez, didn't I? Emmanuel Sanchez, incredible performance. Our official decision of this quarterfinal matchup is coming up next.
They fight the full 25 minutes with the official decision, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Eric Colon, scores the fight 48-46. Judge Brian Miner scores it 49-46. to And Judge Jaron Vallel scores the fight 49 to 45. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, earning his place in the semifinal round of the Featherweight World Grand Prix, Emmanuel Hermador Sanchez. He has never looked better. And much respect to Daniel Weichel, surviving round two, going the distance. Emmanuel Sanchez is now officially a semi-finalist, and he will visit with Big John. Emmanuel, like it says on your headband, Matador Sanchez, well, we're gonna call you Terminator Sanchez after that performance because that was incredible. Your pressure and your pace was unbelievable. Talk to me about what you were feeling inside of this cage in that fight. Just uh, a note to, to, to my kids in jiu-jitsu class and to all the students at Rufus Sport and everyone in the world, you can do anything when you believe in yourself. Believe in your greatness, unparalleled greatness, hard work, dedication. That's what it's all about. What does it mean to you knowing that now, with that victory, your next fight is for the Bellator Featherweight Championship? I'm just loving what I do and doing what I love, Big John, and giving all the glory and honor to my great God above. And life is good. <sighs> my fight was canceled, all the negativity and crazy stuff that's going on in the world. But now I'm here, and I'm so blessed to have this whole week, this day, this opportunity, this victory. And I'm grateful for even Daniel Weichel. Without a great fighter like that, I'm going to be able to put out great performance just like this. Likewise with all the other fighters in the Grand Prix. And yeah, I'm going to go out and get that title that I didn't get in Israel. Well, I'll tell you what, that was an unbelievable performance. Your pressure, the way, your pace, incredible. Congratulations on a fantastic performance. Goldie, back to you. They go the distance, and it was definitely a big unanimous decision victory for El Matador Emmanuel Sanchez. Pitbull on Pedro. He brings an interesting level of violence, but I still do everything better. Pedro on Pitbull. He was a brawler, but now you can see he's more of a chess player. John Cavanaugh is a master strategist. So is Chael Sonnen. So, Coach Chael, tell me what the challenger should do. Look, if you're sitting down and you're strategizing, you're coming up with your game plan for how you're going to fight Pitbull, you only have two choices. Would I rather be on my feet with him or would I rather be on the ground? If you're on your feet, he's going to try to knock you out. If you were on the ground, he's going to try to break a limb. Pitbull will send you to the hospital. And it's all over! You don't become world champion by accident. Look, we're in a tournament here, okay? When Pitbull's in the tournament, all eyes are on Pitbull. Every time he steps in the cage in this tournament, the belt is on the line. And guys, don't forget this. It was Pitbull's choice. Pitbull hand-picked Carvalho publicly. Pitbull's on stage. He's got the belt over his shoulder. He points to Carvalho and he says, you're next.
Welcome back into Bellator 252 in the quarterfinals of the Featherweight World Grand Prix, where Emmanuel Sanchez has now advanced to the next round of the tournament, and he awaits the winner of tonight's main event to see who he will fight next. Will it be the champ, Patricio Pitbull, or will it be the challenger, Pedro Carvalho? Chill. I mean, listen to this guy. I mean, these guys have been going at it since, really since pa Patricio called out Pedro at our, you know, our selection show. The teammates have gotten into it. The gyms have gotten into it. Now they get to settle it in the cage tonight. I'm so excited for our main event. And Jen, I'll tell you this. If you are going to beat Pitbull, you must take the rhythm early and you must maintain it through the fight. That is what Carvalho's strategy has to be for him to be successful tonight. Well, there's so much on the line for that fight. Uh, not only the belt, but moving on in the tournament, of course, advancing uh, to the chance to win that million-dollar grand prize. That's our main event. But next, we've got the battle of the undefeated welterweights. I know you said this is the fight you're most looking forward to. Logan Storley, Yaroslav Amosov, why? Okay, Amosov is this monk to amongst the best fighters I have ever seen, Jen. Period, hard stop right there. He has the current best record in all of MMA, of course, with the exclusion of Khabib, who's recently retired, but then you have Logan Storley, who is a winner, okay? Logan Storley's a good fighter. He's a great competitor. Amoslav is a good fighter. He's a great competitor, so something has to give here. One of these guys has more will than the other. This is going to be a battle of will, not skill. I love matches like this. I love the way you broke that down. All right, that fight is coming up next. We've got the man with the best record in MMA today. Yaroslav Amosov makes his sixth walk to the Bellator cage to take on Logan Storley, who says he's handing him his first loss tonight. Next up tonight here at Bellator 252, we feature two undefeated welterweights. And now, first, making his way to the cage, please welcome Logan Stornley. And now his opponent ready to make his way to the cage, Yaroslav Dynamo Amazon. Моя игра, моя игра, она мне принадлежит, и таким же, 
как и я Моя игра, моя игра Здесь правила одни и все Four-time combat sambo world champion, born and raised in Kiev, now training at American top team Yaroslav Amazov. The four-time Division I All-American from the University of Minnesota, Logan Storley, is mentored by the man he calls the scariest welterweight of all time, ruthless Robbie Lawler. Our tale of the tape for this battle of unbeatens. 24-0, Amazov, 11-0, Logan Story. Amazov will have the reach advantage. Once again, Michael C. Williams. Live on CBS Sports Network, Bellator MMA now presents a welterweight feature set for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner at 5'9", weighing in 170 pounds even, his professional record undefeated with 11 wins, no losses, fighting out of Webster, South Dakota, Logan Stortley. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner. At 5'11", weighing in 170 and one half pounds, he too stands undefeated as a professional. He brings 24 victories with no defeats. From Irpin, Ukraine, presenting Yaroslav Dynamo Amazon. And the referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. Kevin McDonald, our referee. A combined 35 and 0. Amosov, Storley. Fight scheduled for three five minute rounds. Here we go. Tonight's fight clock presented by Geico. Amosov in the red gloves, Logan Storley in the blue gloves. John, the first thing I noticed with Logan's story, look at the size of his legs. <laughs> I never had big legs, so I admire other people that have big legs. Yep. Logan Storley, a six-time state champion, because in the states of South Dakota and Minnesota, you're eligible in seventh, eighth, ninth grade, and then, of course, your high school years. In seventh grade, he beat an 11th grader. Now, in MMA, he is trying to beat the man who has the best record of all active fighters in the sport. That's a very important element that we just saw. You saw Logan going after that, did not get the takedown. That's important for Amazon. But this right here is very important for Logan that he continues on in trying to get that takedown. People don't understand how much of a mental break it is when you can't get the takedown and you're the opponent. Someone's trying to take you down. If I can stuff your takedown, it starts to kill your, your momentum and they give up on the takedown. And Logan Storley can't afford to do that in this fight. No, he cannot. That's pretty much what Amazon said pre-fight, Josh. He's a good wrestler when he's on top, but I think if I advance two or three times, he will tire, my takedowns will take over. I am more versatile. John, I can't explain to you how impressive this is so far what I'm seeing. He's just driving his knee into the ground, staying heavy on that hip, so Storley can't pick up the leg and start to drive into him and get to the takedown. That was, that was actually a really nice reshoot by Logan in the middle of that uh, attempted takedown because he had, you saw Amazov start to run out of it. You saw Logan reshoot on it, and Amazov again fought off that takedown. I mean, if I had to say there was a similar opponent, John, it would be Ed Ruth. Sure. Ed Ruth being a, a three-time national champ out of Penn State, whereas the two of them had some battles and scrambles in there. I know that Logan Storley is a good wrestler, but the level of wrestling is completely different between Ed Ruth and Logan Storley. Well, there, if there's one thing also, if you're looking at the difference between them as fighters, is Logan doesn't have the stand-up that Ed Ruth has as far as... Ed has already proved that he's got power in his hands and can be dangerous at times in the stand-up. Logan has not proved that at this point in his career. Here's the thing that Logan had mentioned, though, John, is that Amazon fights at like 60, 70, sometimes 80%. We haven't even seen the best Amosov yet, which is crazy because he's just so relaxed, so composed in all of these positions. That hip switch right there was beautiful. Get him to a hip. 
Amosov respectfully said he thinks Ed Roof is better. Ed is a big guy, he has skills in wrestling, not tall, smaller, which is better for me. Speaking of Logan at 5'9", Amosov at 5'11", you saw on the tail of the tape the reach advantage. But Amosov's been working in ATT with Austin Vandiver, uh, Johnny Eblen, like guys like that that are physically bigger guys than Logan Storley and very, uh, very good wrestlers as well. Austin Vanderford looks at who gets the takedown. Who gets the first one with the takedown? And that's what Yaroslav said pre-fight, John. That is exactly the difference in this guy. He is not the wrestler. He's not the striker. He's the MMA fighter. He does it all. Nice switch there by Logan. But again, Amazov takes him right out of it. You saw a little bit of that frustration right there with Logan. He sat down on his knee, got to his own feet, and he sat and just kind of sat there for a second before he stood back up. But the difference right now that we have to see out of Amazov is when Logan makes these attempts, you've got to make him pay for it. Yep, stuck in those hands, go. You hear ruthless Robbie Lawler saying, start getting those hands going. But this is what Amosov needs to do, is you need to make it uncomfortable. You, weren't, you haven't been able to take me down yet, and I've been able to take you down. Now there's more mentally, there's more pressure on Logan Storley as the fight goes on, John. Pace, pace, pace! 20 seconds! the ball! Win the round! Nice, Logan! You're good! Two unbeaten fighters from two of the best camps in the sport. punches at least before you take a shot from so far away. Trust your hands. Look how he's sitting on the floor. Let's go. Stay focused. Stay strong. Maybe let's get to a double leg. Just work to get to the floor. Maybe we're going to go on the floor. Trust your hands. Trust it. Hey, Logan. Give me a couple. We'll finish the going. Go, seconds out, please. Seconds out. Yes, follow through. Cameras out, please. Let's go, guys. Out, out. Best shot with the driving shot. Move over here, folks. Between the blue. Between the red. Hold up. Round two. Round two. Here we go. Logan Storley did not sit down between rounds. Yuroslav Amazov sat down on the canvas, which might mean somebody forgot the stool. It might mean exactly that. Amazov came out with a beautiful left-right combination. He just landed on Logan. Between rounds, you heard Robbie Lawler say, believe in your hands. And the said the same thing. Let your hands go, but he's going to have to use that to set up his takedowns. I don't think you're going to see him shoot a whole lot on the legs anymore. He's going to try to shoot on the legs and work his way up to the body lock. John. There it is. There it is. Yep. Keep that pressure on him. That voice so ruthless Robbie Lawler definitely penetrates through this empty arena. That was nice right there. Nice job by Storley. Control. Got Amazov to turn Wait for that balance here. point. Well, here goes Amazov. This is where he Get won the scrambles with Ed Ruth as well, which is crazy to think because Ed Ruth's ability to scramble is just insane. He didn't win that one with uh, Storley, so he did a good job of maintaining that position. How about you hit him once? Let's go. Making, <laughs> Amazon, <laughs> making Amazon carry his weight. Robbie Lawler, how about you hit him once? <laughs> when Logan Storley fought in his home state of South Dakota, I saw Robbie Lawler. He was with him, and I asked about him. And Robbie simply said, if I didn't believe in Logan Storley, I wouldn't be here right now. Don't go. 
This is the fight that I was the most excited to see on this card, John, because I knew it would be a chess match, exactly what we're seeing right here. That first one was pretty good. Well, we know how good Logan Storch is. Not every wrestler's wrestling translates into MMA well, but Logan Storley's has, and he's very good with it. But we've seen Amazon and seen how good Amazon is in this scrambles type situation right here, and what he can do. Yeah. Set up that Dars. Got that Dars, and it's in a position that can work. And that's in tight. Oh, that's that in tight. Oh, he finished it right here, right now. It's going to be over. Oh, he got the leg free. Nice job by Logan Storley. He's able to slip out with the sweat. Yeah, but he is definitely gassing from the pressure of that choke. 19 finishes amongst his 24 wins. Logan talked about his ability to scramble, training with Kamal Usman. So this is where he feels like he can excel in this fight to make uh, Amosov tired. Well, you gotta figure he's going to practice against guys like Gilbert Burns and having to survive the submissions that a world champion is putting on him. So he's been there before. That was a really nice job by Logan Storley. Amosov, 10 career wins by submission, eight of those by choke. Storley oh, survives. Amosov mouthpiece came out. Nice Nice shot by okay. Logan Storley. Okay. That was sweet. Put the pressure on him. Continue to put the pressure on him. The instruction from the corner of Storley and the blue gloves. Chin down. Yes. Stay sharp. Stay high there. Get the ball. Hey, shut that leg. He's trying to set up that Darcy again. Here he goes. He's good at rolling through on that. He's very good with it because that's not an easy thing to do. John, as this fight goes on, though, with Amosov, he always fights at this 60-70%, so nothing has a ton of power on it. You see how relaxed he looks right now. But right now, when you're taking a look at what's everything that's happened with all the action in this, it's only Amosov that's been in positions to cause an end to this fight. Right now, Stormy has won what we call positional control at times, but nothing as far as endangering Amosov. He's going right back to that Darce. Control the rest. He moves your guard. Right now, it would be... Yep. Nothing yeah, at this point. He's decided to let it go. Yeah, one minute, not less, here in round two. A chess match indeed. Yeah, both of these guys have put a ton out in this fight. They're both tired. They have both just been going crazy as far as the positional changes, Josh. But Logan Storley just gave up the position. He conceded the position and sat to his hip, which is not normal for Logan Storley because we have never seen Logan Storley on his back in this position during the fight. Storley said he changed up his cardio for this fight to the Olympic work fight sprints because he knew it was going to be the toughest 15 minutes of competition that he has ever had. And we are headed to the okay, final okay, five. Stop. Clean break. Hey, you got five minutes, man. You're winning this, winning this fight, these last five minutes. Hey, Logan, let's go now. Don't let him win any scrambles. You're winning the scrambles. Let's go. Back up for me, please. Tonight at 9.30 Eastern, the PBR World Finals get underway from Jerry World, best riders in the business, looking to come home with the hardware right here on CBS Sports Network. Third and final round. Five minutes remain. Combined 35 and 0. 24 wins for Amazon. 
11 for Storley. John, we talk all the time between rounds about the corners being truthful and honest with their, with their fighters. Andrew Hoop just said that Logan Storley is winning this fight. What do you have to say? He also said he was winning the scrambles. And I, I, I didn't see it. And right now, it could be I, it could be that he's even in this fight. That's a, that's a good possibility, but he's not winning it. He's got to win this round for sure. Amazov possibly needs to win it too. Nice knee to the body by Amazov. Logan's having success with his hands. You just got to have a little more confidence when he throws it. So what you're, what you're seeing right there, there's no counter. Look at there's no counter by Logan. He needs to be countering at that point. And, and I know it's easy for me to say on the outside here, but you're as tired as he is, not an easy thing to do. And that right there was a, that's a veteran move right there that Amazon did. He stuffed the takedown and came back and touched him and touched him. Not, so, not anything super hard to load it up on, but he just touched him to let him know I'm going to make you pay every time you miss a shot. And that's big with nice lead when you're talking about judging in MMA. They're looking to see that you, you should get, you know, that guy comes in, he shoots the takedown, and then you make him pay for it. That scores. Both men knew they were in for a battle. How do judges score? Like, Amosov makes it look so fluid. There's not a lot of power. He doesn't load things up. As a judge, it's like, sure, you're landing, but nothing really looks like it's landing hard. We've seen in the past, when he touches people just like that right there, he just lifted the leg, and he went down. Things are, it seems like things come out a little harder, a little bit more technical from him. How do you judge that, though, as a, as a judge? Well, right now, when you look at Amazon's fighter, everything that you're seeing is what we call volume. He's hitting him with volume. He's not hitting him with real heavy shots. He's not hitting him with what we call damaging shots where you see him get hurt. But he's putting volume on it, and that right now is winning in this round. Showed good discipline, too. Hesitating and not throwing that kick earlier when Storley was down. I know, I was really worried when all of a sudden I saw him start to get out. And he started to chamber that kick, and I was like, no, don't get in the way of Don't get in the way of an outstanding battle. John, for someone who has really no wrestling credentials, Amosov, he just is wrestling with the best guys. In the, some of the best guys in the world. Well, you're four time combat ensemble world champion. You've done a little grappling. Pick a side. Pick a side. Look at him trying to get his hips high above Storley's hips. Oh, 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 oh. That's in. John, he's got that behind the head and under the chin. But there's no doubt he should hold on to that. Relax. Just squeeze nice and comfortably. A lot of air in his chest right now will help that make it tight. That's a lot of energy going out right now. If Logan can't finish this, though, it is definitely not going to be finished. But man, was close, and he snuck it in quick. I've said, like, there's chances for people to get out of submissions when you're sweaty, but there's also chances to get them in. Definitely the most significant moment of this third round. No doubt about it. Right now, you got to take a look. Amazon was winning the round, but right now, Storley's getting it back. Working for it, trying to lock it down again. Can he get it? It is not there. It's on the jaw. It's on the jaw. Off is going to be fine. He just needs to. He's got to calm himself down. He's breathing through his nose. It's pressure on the jaw. It's not comfortable, especially when you got someone strong like Sterling doing it. That's in tight. You see Amazon starting to turn. Now, nicely done. Great job by him. But if it is 1 1 as we enter the third round. Huge momentum swing for Logan Storley. Absolutely. Logan Storley is doing exactly what he needed to do. This is where we see Logan Storley be so good. 20 seconds. Right now, Logan Storley's arms are heavy from trying to get that choke, but he's fighting, man. What a third round, especially the second half of the third from Logan Storley. It is in the hands of the judges. Who has gained the victory? Who will remain unbeaten? We will find out. Coming up next.
expectation take a look at the final numbers and now let's hear what the judges have to say from the voice michael c williams ladies and gentlemen for the decision we'll go to your three judges at cage side your first judge dave torelli scores the fight 29 28 he sees the fight for storley your second judge jaron Bullell, 29 28 he sees the fight for amazon your third and final judge at cage side, Doug Crosby, scores the fight 29 to 28 for the winner by split decision, still undefeated, Yaroslav Dynamo Amazon. The still undefeated didn't give any hint to either fighter as Michael C. Williams gave the official decision. It goes to Dynamo. Main event still to come. Patricio Pitbull promises that the challenger will immediately realize he's in the cage with the champ. For Pedro Cavadio, he says it's never personal. He sees a body. He's the hunter. They are the prey.
it has been thus far in our home away from home, the Mohegan Sun Arena. Mike Colbert, Josh Thompson, Big John McCarthy earlier. Our last prelim featured Aaron Pico and John DeJesus. And man, oh man, what a fight. These are all the things, John, that we've been talking about. I've wanted to see out of Aaron Pico. Look, we, he got thrown into the mix with all the hype and all the things that were talked about because he was so young and such a specialty. But guess what? He has finally found a home at Greg Jackson's, and I couldn't be more happier or proud of him to see the performance you see right here. He checks, he blocks, he's, he's keeping his composure. Boom, right over the top. Nicely done. Then he picks and chooses his shots for the finish until the ref jumps in. Aaron Pico looks phenomenal. Phenomenal now, and I gotta tip my hat to him in making his life change, moving to Albuquerque, and getting that, and getting to become the fighter that we all knew he could be. And you also have to give credit to Brandon Gibson, Greg Jackson, Mike Winklejohn, because they took a guy who was broken, and he even said, I was broken, and they have reshaped him, they've got him believing, and man, did he perform. Seven wins, seven finishes. Congratulations, Aaron Pico. Pedro Caballu has not lost in nearly five years. In 34 professional fights, Pitbull has only been stopped due to injury. And oh, by the way, that was at 155. It is Brazil against Portugal for the Featherweight World Championship.
The fighter that has the most on the line tonight would be our current featherweight champion, Patricio Pitbull. And it's not just his chance at advancing in the tournament and the million dollars, but it is also his belt tonight. All right, welcome back into the Bellator Fight Sphere. Jen Brown here alongside Chael Sun. And Chael, you would think about all of these things on the line that Patricio Pitbull might be feeling the pressure. But this is nothing new for him, right? He's won two featherweight tournaments before. He's 30 and four. He's fought the who's who. Why is Patricio Pitbull so dangerous? Sure, there's always a new challenge. I'm very interested. Look, his challenge tonight is a simple question. Is he focused on the Grand Prix and looking ahead, or is he focused on the task at hand, which is beating this opponent, Carvalho, and defending his championship? Look, one thing that Pitbull does, Jen, he just understands space. He understands time and space. Look, basketball turf, guys throw air balls all the time. Pitbull doesn't do air balls. When he reaches out to touch somebody, he reaches out and he touches somebody. He can do it with his legs as well, by the way. He's very difficult to take down. Some of that is just his stature. He's naturally a shorter guy for the division. He's hard to get under. I mean, that was even the problem that Michael Chandler had with him. Hard to close that distance, and not to mention he's compact. And compared to, like, a Mike Tyson type, he's very powerful. Everything he does, powerful. Very Jones. powerful. A win tonight will make him the winningest fighter in Bellator history. Uh, we talked to Pedro Cavallo this week. We said, what are you going to show Patricio Pipples that he hasn't seen? You know what he said, Shale? He said Tell me. mindset. What do you think? I know he's confident. I know that he's also very tough. I mean, look, confidence is largely something that you use by some jerk that was trying to write a book to sell on Amazon, okay? Confidence does not take you very far in the fight game, but a belief in yourself, a belief in having a durability that you can be around when the end of the night comes. A fighter's biggest fear, Jen, is not losing. A fighter's biggest fear is exhaustion. Carvalho believes that he is trained and that he is in shape. The key to this is making it to those championship rounds because Pitbull's going to do his most dangerous work early on. That is right. Now, Carvalho, you and we talked about he is confident, and he should be. He's uh, not lost a fight in almost five years, but when we talked to Pitbull about that confidence, he said, yeah, when I was a young fighter, I was confidence once, and then I fought Joe Warren. And I learned a very big life lesson, and tonight I am going to teach him his. All right, it's going to be a great one, Goldie. Back down to you. Everything is on the line. Patricio Pitbull can certainly make the claim he's the best featherweight in the world. He's the best fighter in Bellator. He also <laughs> says I'm faster, stronger, and better than I've ever been. The me now would destroy the Pitbull of the past. Pedro Cavalho, well, he says I am, and I quote, 14 times better than the fighter I was in March. You look at Pitbull, that's the look you always see when he is prepared for a big fight. We are set for our main event of the evening. Bellator MMA on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Mohegan Sun Arena. We don't sell tickets, we make memories.
with the featherweight championship on the line, Patricio Pitbull. Come, I'm ready for you. Defending against Pedro Carvalho. I'll be the hunter, and once again, he'll be the prey. What a performance! I'm not only the future. And Carvalho looking for it again. There's the tag. I'm the present. You be king. You're gonna have to kill me. Oh my god! The title is on the line, and a spot in the semifinals, the road to a million dollars, is also on the line. Patricio Pitbull, Pedro Cavallo. He has only been stopped once. That was in his third professional fight over seven years ago. Big John, the keys to victory for the challenger. Now, simply for Pedro Carvalho, he has got to put pressure on Pitbull and move him backward. If you don't move him backward, you have little chance of winning. Stay off of the fence, and if he does go for the takedowns, look for that guillotine that you are so good with. And now, the reigning Bellator featherweight world champion, Patricio Pitbull. Thirty-fifth professional fight for Pitbull. He has seen it. And he has done it, and he has conquered pretty much all. A very proud Brazilian patriot. Josh, keys for the champion. The keys for Patricio Pitbull is he needs to keep the center of the cage. He's matured as a fighter. He's been doing that lately. I want to see him continue to do that in this fight. I know his name is the Pitbull, but he needs to avoid a dog fight. He does not give, he does not want to give Pedro a chance to make, to get, to get that knockout or that opportunity to win this fight. He needs to avoid that dog fight and fight smart. September 7th, 1822, a significant date for these two men who both walked in to their national anthems. Our tale of the tape for our main event of the evening. 33-year-old champion against 25-year-old challenger who is much taller and will have the reach advantage. Once again, Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA Live on CBS Sports Network from Mohegan Sun Arena the Time has come for the conclusion of the Featherweight World Grand Prix quarterfinals tonight's main event five five minute rounds for the Bellator Featherweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman James Gessner, President of Sports and Entertainment, Tom Cantone, supervising at Cape Side, Mr. Mike Mazzulli. 
And now, first, introducing the blue corner. At 5'11", weighing in 144 and one half pounds. In his first fight for a world title, he brings 11 professional victories, along with three losses. Hailing from Gibbonite, Portugal, he fights out of Dublin, Ireland, the challenger, Pedro Carvalho. And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner. At 5'6", weighing in 144.7 pounds, the reigning two-division world champion tonight stands with 30 professional victories for defeats. From Natal, Rio Grande, the Norte Brasil, the defending Bellator featherweight world champion, Patricio Pitbull. And the referee in charge, Mike Beltran. Back it up. Bring it in, gentlemen. Bring it in. All right, gentlemen, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch those now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on out. Handle your business. Let's go. All the way back, Pedro. That all the way back. is on the line. The featherweight belt. The champion. The challenger. Fight schedule for five. Our five minute rounds. Round. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Hell, let's go. Here we go. Tonight's fight clock presented by Geico. Red gloves for the champion. Blue gloves for the challenger. Pedro took a page out of James Gallagher and Kiefer Crosby. Ran out to the center of the cage before Patricio could do that. Carvalho moved from Portugal to Cuba oh. many years ago. He is 6 0 oh since making that move. Josh, you got a little excited on that shot. I got excited because you saw Pedro's legs buckle just a tad bit there. It's good that he probably caught the left hook versus the straight right like Michael Chandler did. Yes, it was. We saw Pedro come out just like you said, like another guy from SBG at 145 pounds used to come out and dominate the center and keep at length. That's the whole game plan for Pedro Carvalho. But right now, he's in a position where the height works against him, against Pitbull. And Pitbull likes to get him into the positions where he's the one dictating off of counter strikes. He's a very good counter strike fighter. Oh, he heard him again with the right shot. And there's that arm and guillotine. It's going to be tight. Can he finish it quickly? The champion has the hook in. Scramble for position early. His grappling is phenomenal. John Patricio Pitbull is so strong, physically strong in all the areas. You try to move his legs and his hips, and he doesn't move. Good start for the champion. He's just got to stay composed like what you're seeing right now, pick and choose his shots, because like we talked about, Pedro leaves himself open by trying to pressure the fight too much. Caught him again. That's the third time that he has been hit. You can see oh, again. And it is all over. Just like that. Patricio Pitbull remains the featherweight world champion. He just put the rest of this World Grand Prix on notice. Well, you know, how many times have we said it? You don't know what you don't know until all of a sudden you know. And it is the power of Pitbull that is indescribable to people at the featherweight division. Look at the shot. That big right hand hurt him early. You see him. Collects himself, but it was multiple times. There's that finish right there. You can see as he's hitting, there's nobody home. As he first hits the ground, left hand touches, right hand straight down the pipe. You see the way Carvalho goes down. That is exactly why referee Mike Beltran steps in. But he just settled himself. Look at it. Look at how look at the composure of Pitbull. Hit him with the left hook. He didn't even need to follow up with the right hand. He was already on his way down, John. The power is there. There's no doubt about it. We've seen it against all of his opponents. He touches them, they go to sleep.
Pitbull, and I quote, he will try to bring the fight to me, and I will make him pay for it. That's exactly what he just did. Eighth career Bellator knockout for the champ. Bellator win. He is number one all time. It happens in the first round. It's a knockout. He remains the champion. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, as of two minutes, 10 seconds, round number one, he is the winner by knockout. He advances in the Featherweight World Grand Prix, and he is still Bellator Featherweight World Champion Patricio Pitbull. Patricio Pitbull by knockout in just two minutes and 10 seconds. Man, he may be the best in the world right now. Here's Big John. Patricio, that was an impressive performance. Your power was on display in that fight. When you first hit him with the first right hand, did you know, oh, if I touch him with this again, I think I could put him away? It's, it's, almost, it's, it's almost impossible. Uh, a human being got my, my hand on the chin and keep standing. So I knew that. Well, you hit him with a beautiful left-right to finish the fight. He went down hard. The referee stopped the fight. This was a championship fight, but it then moves you on in the featherweight tournament. You know now your next opponent is going to be Emmanuel Sanchez. You've already fought him once. What does that mean to you? He's not tough. I was expecting that. Uh, now he's more dynamic, and I like his style. So I can't wait to fight him again. Can't wait to fight him again. Well, we cannot wait to watch it again. You were in this position back in March to come in here and fight, and that fight was canceled for you. What did the time do for you? Do you think it actually helped you having that time before this fight? It's very tough because it's too, too many months uh, waiting for one, just one fight. But uh, I enjoy my family and my training camp, and it was very good for me. I enjoy it. Well, I just want to tell you that was an incredible performance. Your power is phenomenal. Congratulations on moving on in the featherweight tournament, one fight away from having that million-dollar 
payday as far as the fight. Congratulations on a beautiful performance. Thank you very much. Brazil, o ouro fica no Brazil. Tamo junto, pai, mãe, Teresa, Davi, Miguel, amo vocês. Pitbull Brothers, Brazil. He remains the champion. We have our semifinal matchups. Emmanuel Sanchez, Patricio Pitbull, one week from tonight, AJ McKee, and Darion Caldwell. Sanchez, tremendous tonight. They will have a rematch of a great fight a number of years ago. Coming up, this is the matchup. Semi-final number two, Emmanuel Sanchez facing us against the champion and for that featherweight title, Patricio Pitbull. We cannot wait to see this fight. If it is anything like the first one, John is exactly right. We can not wait. A full 25 minutes earlier tonight for Emmanuel Sanchez. Two minutes and 10 seconds for that man, Patricio Pitbull. Brazil! Let's get it back up to Jen and Chael. Well, thanks, Goldie. I think I can speak for Chael and say we cannot wait for that one either. All right, we're going to look back at this fight because, you know, we talked to Pedro this week. He said, I have to respect Patricio Pitbull's power. But apparently there's one thing when you can say that, but it's another thing to do that because, I mean, were you surprised how quick he went down? I was blown away. And, Jen, I got to tell you, for two, uh, two minutes and 10-second contest, a lot happened here. Don't forget, there was a versatility shown by Pitbull. There was a grappling component. There was a takedown. There was a submission attempt all done by Pitbull. By the way, whenever a guy shorter like Pitbull with a smaller reach, you always want to talk about it. he's got to find a way to get inside. And when, when you have his opponents, well, he's got a way uh, on the outside. Excuse me, Pitbull never has to get inside, Jim, because he's there the entire time. He takes the center of the ring. He will dare you. He will go out there and dare you. Try to hit me. I am going to counter, and I'm going to put you down. I've never seen quite a confidence in a stand-up fighter before. I will compare all the greats to him. I'm telling you, for a man to step into the danger zone and stay there at all times, daring you, you go first, flinch any time, but I'm coming. It's like a quick draw. It's like an Old West quick draw, and Pitbull beats him every time. Yes, he does. Does this make him the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter? I mean, like, or has he already established that? I mean, that's what Goldie said earlier. Like, in your mind, is he the best? Yes, absolutely. For Bellator. And, and I would love to tell you why is 145 pounds and 155 pounds are the toughest divisions in the industry, not just this organization, in the industry. He was the king of them both. That's right. He is the king. All right, well, we just saw him square off there with Emmanuel Sanchez. That is who he's going to face in our semifinals. That first fight, it was back in 2018. It went to a decision. It did go Patricio's way, but I'm excited to see them do it again. And I must tell you, Sanchez was a boy at the time. He's now a man. And Jen, this is a real thing because it was a strength issue. He just got outsized. He just got out muscled. He got pushed around by Pitbull. I would argue for you that he's not going to get pushed around, at least not the same, not in 2020. Well, Sanchez says this is what he wanted. He wanted redemption against Vichel, and he wants redemption against Patricio. He calls it a legendary setup for him to win the belt. All right. It's that's it for us up here. Let's head back down. Goldie, what you got? Week from tonight, semifinal number one. It is Darion Caldwell facing 16 and 0 AJ McKee. Who will move one step closer to the champion? Who will move one step closer to a million dollar prize? Find out next Thursday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, right here on CBS Sports Network. Coldwell, the former bantamweight champion, A.J. McKee, the mercenary, unbeaten in his professional career. If we thought we had great matchups tonight, John, I'm pretty sure we have a great one, starting with A.J. McKee. Oh, when you're talking about A.J. McKee, you are talking about a guy that is dynamic. He is so good everywhere. His wrestling is good. His submission game is phenomenal. And his stand-up, he's got power. He's got speed. He's got length. He does it all. He was the guy that I picked from the beginning to be the guy that was going to win this tournament. He is in against a champion against Darian Caldwell. But Darian Caldwell has the experience of five-round fights. Darian Caldwell also has been a former champion. Darian Caldwell has the wrestling pedigree to take him down. As you see right here with Adam Borch, who there was a ton of hype behind. Darian Caldwell went out there and dispatched him in one round.
This is a spectacular matchup as we work our way. We are now to the final four. We will find out who will be in the finals, at least one man, one week from tonight. What a night indeed. What a battle for 25 minutes in the first quarterfinal. And then Pitbull remains the champion. For Michael C. Williams, Jen Brown, Jail Sonnen, Josh Thompson, Big John McCarthy, and our entire crew. This is Mike Colbert saying so long until we see you next time right here inside the Bellator cage. Now it's inside the PBR World Finals presented by Yeti.